Welcome back to Aquadine on this lovely Saturday morning beach scenario. Most are eager to have some fun, especially Diana. They're just waiting on Elizabeth now. What an awesome day to play in the sun. Anybody want to try smashing watermelons? Maybe you can. It's not stupid, it's his martial arts uniform. The mind and body needs to be at one at any given moment, even in relaxation. Okay, Diana, keep the fangirl away from this scenario, please. I know, you sound like an old geezer. Call me whatever you want. Oh, you have to bully her, don't you? Don't bully someone because of their physique, okay? Imagine if you were born being bullied because of that. You wouldn't like that, would you? There's a first for everyone, Elizabeth. Don't be embarrassed by it. I don't want to get this uniform wet either. Oh, pass. Just wanted to draw. Seriously? And why do we bother coming here? You know what? Sometimes on the beach, you just want to relax. You don't want to actually get wet. You just want to come to the beachside and relax. It is a lovely place to relax, as long as it's not too windy. Di, didn't you just hear what she said earlier? She doesn't know how to swim. So diving comes after swimming. You've got to learn the basics first before doing something that advanced, for goodness sakes. I mean, diving is not that advanced, but in comparison to barely learning or knowing how to swim, diving is quite advanced. I am not surprised, Anna. I am disappointed, but not surprised. The writers have made Diana the center stage of pretty much every conversation in this game aside any time that she is not on the screen. So I think there might be some writing, not flaws, but there's a lot of centralization on one character at this point in time. Volleyball. Volley the ball over the net, Diana. It's like a calm before the storm. <laughs> that smile may be forgiving and innocent, but there is a hidden competitive spirit behind that smile. What is this angelic OST going on? <laughs> it's like if Elizabeth is the angel for goodness sakes in all this. Ouch. <laughs> a point is finally in play. Elizabeth, are you okay? How excruciating. <laughs> As expected of a goddess of victory, we're fighting back. <laughs> what do you think she is? Like a victini or something? Just guides everyone to victory with a star-like presence. Cameron, you're not helping the situation, okay? Cameron's awe is so intimidating that Elizabeth could feel goosebumps. But she takes a deep breath nonetheless. As Elizabeth exhales, she finds determination to take her serve. Both the ball and her body are soon airborne. Pooh! With barely any power behind it, Elizabeth hits the ball just hard enough for it to fly over the net. That's a strategy in itself making sure that the opponent actually has to reach out for the ball rather than just always going to the back. Your shaking doesn't match your words, Diana. I'm sorry. Uh, we're gonna t yeah, Cameron's our opponent. Everyone gets back in position with hardly any motivation. Their only concern is now, now is their lives. Yep, and... Oh, 497 points later, four sand coffins rest side by side. Each is occupied accompanied with own tombstones or tomb kickboards rather a lone warrior walks past a graveyard and pays respects to each of them important lives were lost today <laughs> too many of them but that is why i must grow stronger to make sure the same mistakes won't happen again and robin you are my best friend i'm sorry it ended this way but something had to be done i wish we could have spent more time together as Cameron turns away, a hand suddenly thrusts out of the sand and slowly pulls itself out. What was that? A plump body of Why are we even surprised? This is a makeshift grave. If it was from anybody else, that would be a joke, Elizabeth. But because of your gluttonous nature, that is really scary. After an exhausting day, Elizabeth leads everyone back to her mansion. A luxury most of them haven't seen in person. They already plan to spend the night here. But this is exquisite. And here we are. Please make yourselves at home. Nice place you got here. It's glamorous. It's considerably smaller than one in that city. So I apologize if it felt... Look, this is the best house we've ever seen in our entire lives, okay? Don't you dare say it if it didn't meet our expectations, okay? An introduction to his father. The man ensnares Elizabeth in his arms and hugs here. He's as happy as a loving dog who hasn't seen his owner in months. F Father, please stop. You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. Who cares? Let them witness how deep our love truly runs. Well, aren't you heinous? Wait, Father, Robin was invited because I wished to spend time with him. 
What? You're hanging out with a boy? Yeah, because that's surprising. What troubles you, father? I already informed you of my friend's arrival. But I didn't know you meant a guy. That changes everything. There's nothing to suspect here at all. You've seen too much of my... <laughs> what? That makes absolutely no sense. As you wish, sir. Hold on, a pistol. Are you kidding me? Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Father, wait. And, of course, Robin flinches to Patrico, but it takes him a few seconds to realize there's no pain. He opens his eyes only to find a friend protecting him. Ouch. And yes, of course, the Charlies wouldn't know that Cameron is also a boy. You saved me, but why? Because you're the closest friend I've ever had. We've been through so much together, and in the end, I couldn't betray you. Stop wasting your breath. You still have a purpose. Something to live for. Before I go, there's something I have to confess to you. Confess? Remember when we were kids and you lost your jello? <laughs> I was the one who ate it. Don't say any more. Cap. Robin's eyes widen as he actually does recall that memory from long ago. Wait, that was you? You punk. <laughs> as Cameron utters those final words. Robin witnessed his closest friend fall before him. The sight of losing someone dear is suddenly becoming a reality. Cameron! Hold on, is this water? Ha ha ha, did you see that daughter? Had those boys fall, didn't I? That's not funny. That's not comedy to everyone. Now unfortunately this is still the real world, mate. You serve a lot of bullies to apprehend. What do you mean, last time? We've... Met before? Yeah, when well, you're really young. Your parents and I go way back. You call me Charles. I know this place is a bit cramped, but please enjoy your stay. Cramped? <laughs> now I'm really curious to see what they consider normal. But at least it's not as overprotective as I thought. This guy just wanted a good laugh. Yeah, it did seem like he was very overprotective at the start there. Like, how dare you invite another person who's of the same gender as I am into this household. Very rude, Elizabeth. Well, guess you have to be rich to raise a pig. Man, we will stick her in one of them eating contests. Best she'll plow through the competition in no time. <laughs> Would that affect her image, you know, as an idol? Not exactly. You look carefully. She's still minding her manners. It's just happening really fast. Except the burping, of course, yeah. The deliverance of the burping is still fast. She's hyperactive. She's a bit airheaded at times. Diners, it would place. Ah, she is a very fun person to spend time with and has a unique charm. I believe we go along quite well and hope to accompany her in many more adventures. I never knew you'd thought that about me that way. I love you, Elizabeth. No matter what your preferences are, I will always support you. And he's chasing that guy with her glasses. What do you mean? What's wrong with Robin? I mean, he's more generous than Diana is. Forgive me for interrupting your conversation, but would anyone care for pecan pie? I would love a slice. Or, or, or just the pie would do. While everyone else is asleep, one girl sneaks out on her own and quietly heads to the beach. Anya? She remains cautious in case anybody is following her. Aside from the bathing suit she's wearing, the girl didn't bring anything else. Footprints in the sand lead to the ripples where the tracks vanish. Her toes gently touch the water before she lets herself to get swooped away. Anya. I thought so, it's Anya. The ocean has been waiting for Anya. Calm waves gladly rock her body back and forth as if they're welcoming her home. Ah, the water feels so good. I've been waiting all day to get in. Anya relaxes while her aquamarine eyes gaze upon the stars. Her restless body is finally at ease. I hate to admit it, but these past couple of days have been fun. Parties, games, sleepovers, everything. Well, except whenever they try to scare me. I wish they'd stop doing that. Well, they know that you're scared easy, so they keep doing that. Glowing. Anya's eyes close as tiny fragments of her skin glow, and the colour of her hair slowly changes as well. Soon enough, she is shining. Her entire body is concealed in a mysterious light. I think it's not a... Um, 
a uncommon fact that she was the mermaid in which um, Cell slash Robin saw at the start of the game. Well, that just confirms it. A blue mermaid emerges from the transformation. Her tail, decorated in pearls, splashes the water as much as it pleases. Ah, I can finally let loose. She starts doing backstrokes before diving underwater to meet her fellow aquatic friends. Robin has a secret, and you have a secret. We all have secrets. No matter how large or small they are, there's still secrets at the end of the day. Hmm, whose roots will you follow first? I feel like this is the point in the game where we're going to diverge onto a particular character's route. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is definitely a time in which we have ourselves an option here. Anya, Diana, Cameron, or Elizabeth. I've always been intrigued by um, the mysteries that lay in wait with Elizabeth because of her like celebrity status, but also her nervousness as a character for having that celebrity status and having expectations met high. We're going to do Elizabeth's story first. Just before heading out of school, Elizabeth checks herself in the mirror one more last time to make sure her hair is properly brushed. However, reflection betrays something more. The hair ribbon she wears every day grieves her. Grieve her, sorry. Yet she holds on to them dearly. It's been a few months, hasn't it? Is something wrong, daughter? The loveliest girl in the world shouldn't frown before going to school. Father, I was just thinking about her, right? She wouldn't want to see you frown, would she? You look as beautiful as ever, but you look even prettier if you smile. Elizabeth can't help but to smile after hearing that, and at the same time, Alfred steps out of the kitchen. Are you certain you wish to skip breakfast, Lady Elizabeth? Yes, I've always wanted to try a meal from school, just like my peers. Though they did warn me not to have high expectations. In that case, I am prepared to depart whenever you're ready. Show those classmates what you're made of, Elizabeth. Get that number one rank and do me proud. It's not about you, you know, Charlie's. It's about Elizabeth. Ugh, got another toss scheduled right after school. What a pain. I wish I could just relax sometimes. Hanging out with friends was kind of fun, but I'm too busy to do that often. Aren't we all? Or we're all preoccupied by something else, which is worldly. Yes, 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 yes. Robin, don't you dare say anything other than yes. All right, I've got nothing bad to Ah, okay. I wouldn't have said it in those words, but there's still the end result at the end of the day, justify the means. Yes. Yes, you never mentioned this before, Elizabeth, that you went to the house in order to look for Cell slash Robin while um, you wanted to confirm something. But alas, we're being a little excessive here in sensitive topics, aren't we, Elizabeth? There are very few things one can achieve alone, and you of all people should know that. What? I've heard from various people that you quit working as a gondolier. Are you okay? I'm fine. No one needs to worry anyway when they've already got sell. You must persist. Despite what others may think of you, not everyone would like you for who you are, and that's okay. Just be the best you can be. Okay, what about you and your singing career then? Uncomfortable? So is Robin uncomfortable about being a gondolier? Charlie, that is too old to start consider being the minimal age for dating, for goodness sakes. People start dating in secondary school, for goodness sakes. Not like it's great. Like, lots of hearts are torn when um, stuff like that happens with, like, fake relationships happen. Like, people who are 16 and stuff like that. Nah, no way. Hearts are always broken, but when you're an adult, like, 18 or in other parts of the world, 21, like, you can make your choice, uh, your own choice in life. But obviously, Charles is an overprotective father. 30? I mean, this isn't about dating. <laughs> you bring up a boy's name and tell me it's not about dating? Yes. Well, why don't you say so? What do you need? <sighs> Stop getting to conclusions before she... <laughs> before she says something. If it was for a girl, then Charlie's might have... be alongside Elizabeth, but not in this case. How could you be so cold? because some of them unfortunately are like that. They prioritize business over people because people don't put money on the table. 
money puts food on the table. That is sound advice, Alfred Butler. You don't need to depend on your father for everything. There are some things only you can do, which is true if, with everything in life. If you want to go to university, uh, your parents are there to support you and give you some advice for things like that, especially if they were university students themselves, but ultimately it's up to you to decide on your destiny in life. Jellyfish? In the air? One of them seems to like her, so it comes a little closer and dances around. Elizabeth cautiously reaches out with her finger, but she feels nothing. Ghosts? Even though she looks scared, the jellyfish don't seem to mind. It kind of looks like it wants to play with her. Oh, aren't you a friendly little thing? The jellyfish moves around happily. The jellyfish of this town are very intriguing. Never I encounter a species quite like you. Sometimes I don't know who to talk to when I'm alone. My mother used to tell me if I wish to get something done, I must work for it. A job won't complete itself after all. <laughs> yep, yeah. you probably can understand me though. But it's nice to have some company. It takes a moment before Elizabeth realizes there's something she can do. That's it. I need a job. It's not always about that. Like, when it comes to emotional problems, money is not the solution for it. Job hunting. Yes, I wanted to try working part-time, especially after learning it's fairly common here. Wow, a rich girl wants a job? You must really be bored or something. <laughs> oh, 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 I know. Want to work with me at a friend's uh, cafe? Would that be okay? Yeah, my mum loves you. You're also pretty... S Did you have to use that word in order to describe someone's talents when it comes to anything in life? <laughs> Unless it's a very niche field of work. Diana is reactive, not proactive. And Elizabeth, what exactly is a normal size? Average size? Average height of that country? You know, be more specific when it comes to normal. There is no such thing as normal. <laughs> wait, my, there's something I want to talk about. Can it wait? We're really busy. Elizabeth and Anya want to work here. Elizabeth Rose wants to work here? Really? You forgot about Anya. Don't remind me. Better if they just forgot about me. Well, I didn't forget, but you didn't say her name. Wait, she did. It was Susan that didn't say her name. Or maybe there is a way which both can be met, you know. The advertisement with the baking and a cup of coffee. Just imagine that. We don't want to wish to talk about it. Just like uh, Robin didn't want to talk about Cell either earlier, but yet you kept pushing on the agenda. But it's very intriguing though about a person's story and uh, their individual experiences. Who are these two? Thank you, Alfred. It's been a while, hasn't it? Hey, Alfred. Hope you don't mind if I barge in. Who's Jonathan? Who's Grace? Well, you've already arrived unannounced, but I'm sure Lady Elizabeth would be delighted to see you anyway. As blunt as always, huh? Lady Elizabeth, your guests have arrived. Jonathan? What a pleasant surprise. Your family paid a visit about a week ago, but we missed you. Sorry about that. Exams kept me from coming with them, so I decided to hang along with Grace. I was planning to visit you with others, but insisted on coming with me. Oh, I bought you a gift. <coughs> Chocolates from soy for you? Oh, thank you, Grace. I remembered you really loved these, and it must have been a while since you've had them. Please follow me, so we can share these chocolates. It appears we have something, some catching up to do, something to catch up on. Ah, pastimes. Father, would you like to try some brownies? I made them myself. Oh, they look great, daughter. Don't mind if I do. After Charlie's bite into a piece, his vibration tells it all. He freezes in place and even turns a bit pale. He starts twitching all over. So, was it to your liking? Of course they were. You did a fine job, daughter. Thank you, father. Wait here, I'll go get some more. More? I mean, would you want to save some for the others? Worry not, I've made plenty, so please finish rest. 
as Rihanna is before he's back to the mansion. Charlie spit out for Brownie by the bush. Oh, God. It's terrible. How good pastries for my extremely... Why do you think it's inexperience? Not talent. Not lack of talent, but inexperience. Poor butler. He's going to get the ravageness of Elizabeth's brownies. Did he just offer me up as a sacrifice? Perhaps it's about time I look for another job. <laughs> Elizabeth walks back out with another tray of brownies, but notes her father isn't here. Alfred, have you seen my father? I brought him some more brownies. I'm afraid Master Charles is busy at this time. Would you like to try one? I would gladly accept your offering. <laughs> oh no. Like, you can't turn her down, but for goodness sakes, I think your stomach may repulse later. <laughs> and you just tell her tell her in the following morning that you've got an upset tummy or something. A bug. Ouch. Really? Well, thank you for at least tasting them. She seems to be taking it rather well for a girl her age. Perhaps there's nothing to worry about after all. Indeed. I'll have you try my next batch, and the next one, and the next one until I convince you that I can bake something delicious. Prepare yourself. Wow. <laughs> Persistency. Whoa, resume your scene career. And they're both in awe. Grace and Jonathan are both stunned by Elizabeth's declaration, especially since they remember what happened before her hiatus. What happened before a hiatus? That is very intriguing. Like, what is the origin of Elizabeth's original reason as to why she stopped singing for this point in time? What? You haven't picked up the mic since the accident. I'm worried about that as well. Maybe you should take some time to think about it. You see, I met a gondola boy who works every day to raise money for his mother's sake. She's been bedridden in the hospital for years, and I wish to help him. I don't want to see them suffer, like I have. That's why I decided to help others, so they don't share the same pain I had to endure. A gondola? Are you talking about Cell? Elizabeth nods. Why are you going so far for him? You'll only hurt yourself again. Cell needs help. Do you honestly expect me to remain idle while he works so hard by assisting him? Perhaps I, can mo I could move on from my own struggles as well. I still think you're going too far off for some show-off. A show-off? What do you have against him? Why do you oppose him so strongly? Because, uh, yeah. Because you what? Yeah, you're not going to open up, are you? You're jealous of Cell because Elizabeth might have some potential friendship with him. Is that what it is? Ouch. Nobody here understands me. Not even you. I was just helping myself if nobody else will. It's not like I don't want to help, but now's not the best time for us, for you. Then when is? He's going through the same predicament I did. If only someone noticed how, yeah, was pushing herself, how could she have gotten help before it was too late? But no one knew, and it's my fault. Charlie gives his daughter a hug to calm her down. That's not true, Elizabeth. Don't blame yourself for what happened that night. I understand you're still taking it hard. Oh. That's the accident. It's not directly related to her music career, but that. That must be it. They, well, Charlie's lost his other half, while Elizabeth lost her mother at a particular night. And something occurred there where Elizabeth feels guilty for what happened, like probably not making it in time, for not taking action sooner, for prioritizing too much on her scene career. That could be it. That could be it. Now we return back to Robin. This is Margaret Young, and I am reporting live outside of the Grand Opera House here with Elizabeth Rhodes manager Grace Chambers. Bah, boring. Grandpa will change channel. Wait, I want to see this. But Grandpa wants to watch Funny Cat and Mouse, Tom and Jerry. You can watch a cartoon after I leave in a bit. So, Grace, what brings you here in Aquadine? It's good to see you, Margaret. I visited Elizabeth recently and we talked about plans for the future. I heard that she took a break from the scene. Is it true? 
Yes, her family had to move due to business reasons, but I'm happy to announce that Elizabeth is coming back on stage. She'll be holding concerts here in this lively town. You heard her, folks. Elizabeth Rhodes is back. That's right, Margaret. She's also working on a new song, and we'll have more information about it soon. I need to get going. Could you do the dishes? Fine, but remember, stay away from sirens. You never know when they'll show up. It's only morning. I guess you want me to get the groceries if I leave, right? Grandpa's taught you well. Now go to school. <laughs> yes, old man. But still, we value our family more than anything else in our lives. Because without family, what do we have to hold ourselves in our time of needs? Friends, obviously, but those closest to us, our household, our blood family, our non-blood family. And I think this is a good time to end this off, folks, as Diana bolts over to Elizabeth's position, probably because of the news this morning, on the morning in the game, that is. So, thank you all so much for watching, guys. This has definitely been a twist and a turn here and there. Some things have been discovered, like um, the possible reason as to why Elizabeth temporarily quitted uh, her singing career was because of an incident related to her mother. And I think that is pretty much it when it comes to the catalyst behind, you know what, I just want to take a step away and I want to reconsider things in life. I want to be able to experience not expand, but oh god, what would the word be? Um, recover from that incident. So, thank you all so much for watching, guys, and see you all in the next time of Aquadine. Thank you all so much for watching, and take care of yourselves.